So today we're going to talk about my favorite topic, which is solo flowers! Hey there, welcome to the family of flower stabbers. Today we are going to be going over the most common questions that people ask me about solo flowers, so let's just jump right in. So the first question I wanted to address today is what are solo flowers? Solo flowers are wood flowers that are made from the root of a tapioca plant, which sounds really weird but is actually really cool. Because they're made from the root of a tapioca plant, they're not like typical wood, which is very fragile and very chippy and not very pliable. The root of a tapioca plant is actually very soft, especially when it has gotten wet. Then they were able to shape them and turn them into flowers, kind of like this. There's a lot of benefits to solo flowers. One of the biggest benefits is that they're actually very allergen friendly. So if we have any brides out there that have difficulties with allergies, especially real flowers, solo flowers are completely allergen free. You don't have to worry about that. Um, a lot of other benefits about them is that they are very realistic looking. If you take a solo flower and compare it to say a plastic flower, you're gonna love the look of a solo flower way more and it's gonna look more realistic. I've actually had people mistake solo flowers for being real flowers because they do look so realistic. Solo flowers are very easy to work with. I've seen many non-florous brides create their own bouquets with solo flowers and they look gorgeous. And they've done a lot of floristy things with solo flowers that they're not necessarily florists, and it turns out amazing. The great thing about solo flowers is that you can buy them years, months, weeks in advance, however long you want to wait, and you can create your bouquet years, months, weeks in advance, and you'll, as long as you store your bouquet correctly, you can pick your bouquet right back up off where you left it and it will look exactly the same. Which leads me into the next question of how do you store them correctly? So to store solo flowers correctly, you need to make sure that they are stored uh, not in an airtight container. Uh, they need to be pulled out of the plastics that they come in and they need to be stored in a cool, dry place. Uh, keeping them in the garage is probably not the best idea. Uh, very easy for them to get moisture or environmental effects from the garage, but if you keep them inside like a closet or inside your house, uh, especially like in a plastic bin or um, in a drawer where they can't get damaged, then they can keep for a very long time waiting for the day that you decide to use them for your wedding. What materials do you need to get started with solo flowers? So obviously the most important thing for solo flowers is you need to have the flowers. But a few other materials will also help make things a little bit easier. So you'll need a flower wire stem. Uh, you're going to want something that's 20 gauge or below. Uh, thicker wire stems tend to create a little bit more sturdy of a bouquet. 18 ga gauge is really good, but you can get away with a 20 gauge. Uh, you're also going to want some more thin wire, uh, floral wire to help keep things together. You'll want some floral tape. Uh, you probably only need one floral tape for a regular bouquet. Depending on how much you're doing, you may need more, but one floral tape round will go pretty far. you also need vegetable glycerin. Paint. If you're making a bouquet or you're making something that's an arrangement, you're going to need greenery. And then, depending on what you're, what you're making, then you'll need the additional materials for that. Say if you're making a bouquet, you'll need a bouquet uh, wrap and a handle wrap. Or if you're making a arrangement in a vase, you're going to need some foam along with the vase. The next question that we get a lot is, why do we need vegetable glycerin and what is this about softening your flowers? Vegetable glycerin is actually a non-toxic material that you can find in the grocery store or you can find on Amazon and just type in vegetable glycerin and it should pop right up. It's something that is used in food sometimes but we use it with our flowers to create this effect where if you dip it in a mixture of vegetable glycerin and water, the flowers actually stay soft after they already dry. Because some of the struggles that you get with solo flowers when you just dip them in water is that they tend to be 
very fragile and can chip and break. However, the vegetable glycerin gives them a little bit more stability and prevents them from breaking so easily. Another added benefit of the vegetable glycerin is it also helps stabilize the wood and keep it from growing mold or having other issues. However, if you want to keep the flowers outside or in a more of a wet environment, you are going to need some kind of sealant on it as the flowers are still made of wood. What are all the ways that you can customize soil flowers? Well, there's a lot. So one of the best ways that you can customize soil flowers is you can paint them or dye them as it's called. There's many different ways to dye them. I've got a video that I'll put up in the link right here of four different ways that you can dye your solo flowers. So go check that out if you want more information about that. The flowers can also be shaped. Um, if you take the flowers and dip them in a little bit of water, you can take the petals and you can shape them and maneuver them however you want to make the flower look more full, to make the flower look more closed, to roll the petals back on the flower a little bit more. Uh, there's a lot of different ways that you can customize these flowers. If you take solo flowers and spritz them with uh, essential oils, they will hold onto the scent really well and you'll have that scent. Uh, solo flowers are so good at diffusing scent that they actually are used as diffuser flowers. Um, sometimes you can take a diffuser and attach it to the end of the flower and it will help diffuse that scent into a room. Another option that you have with these flowers is you can actually buy the rolls of solo wood themselves and create your own flowers. So solo flowers are sold based off of the type of flower that you get. A most basic flower typically can cost about 25 cents to 75 cents a head, sometimes even a dollar if you're getting a larger flower that's a little bit more complicated. Sometimes you can catch them on sale and get them for a really good price. Most of the time you will be buying them in bundles. They're sold typically in bundles of 10 to 12 flowers and, and then shipped together like that. You can't really find them in stores. You can find them occasionally in the dollar store and Hobby Lobby. But in order to get enough to build a bridal bouquet, you are going to need to order them offline. Typically, depending on where you shop, you will need to buy a good amount to avoid shipping costs. Uh, usually, I think it's about $50 or $100. It just kind of depends on where you're shopping, how much um, you'll have to spend to avoid shipping costs. However, you're going to probably end up spending that much anyways if you're making a full bridal bouquet or you're trying to get enough flowers for a whole arrangement of things for your wedding. I just want to end by saying if you're new to the solo flower family, Welcome, a big welcome. I'm so excited to see all the things that you create. If you feel like it, I would love it if you would share your creations with me on Instagram, Solo Flower University. Uh, just look for me on there and tag me in some photos. I'd love to see what you create. And if you found this video helpful, please give it a big thumbs up. It helps me build my Solo Flower uh, empire of greatness and Solo Flowerness. So until next time, stay creative.